Although the Separatist droid army was the largest of its kind ever assembled, it was clear that it was quantity over quality, as a vast majority of the battle droids deployed were nearly useless as individual units. But despite this fact, the Separatists did invest a ton of credits into developing powerful droids to use for special occasions, as well as to replace and upgrade the main units had the war gone for many more years. When it comes to the battle droid with the most overwhelming power and defensive armor, then that easily goes to the Scorponek Annihilator droids. These guys were absolutely terrifying in battle. Imagine a droid that was twice as big, fired blaster bolts powerful enough to penetrate heavy walkers with ease, and had the shielding that could withstand large-scale artillery fire that was essentially what the Annihilator droids were. They were developed and deployed during the late stages of the Clone Wars, and saw tremendous success in action, as it took only a few of these droids to turn the tide of battles in the Separatists' favor. Actually, in one case, a single Annihilator droid was able to take out over 100 clone troopers. Once this fact became known within the Republic, these droids quickly became among the most feared within the clone ranks. While the Annihilator droids were nearly unstoppable, due to their insanely high price tag and difficulty in production, less than 100 of these droids were ever created. Another interesting fact about them was that after the Separatist droid armies were shut down, the Annihilator droids were among the very few that were reactivated and used by the New Galactic Empire. A few were taken to the Imperial Department of Military Research Center, and the rest were put to use on Palpatine's secret fortress world on the deep core world of Biss, where they were likely used for defensive purposes. On the complete opposite end of the power spectrum were the countless standard B-1 battle droids, but despite being some of the weakest droids in the entire army, there were models within the B-1 line that were far more capable than the standard ones. The strongest B-1 model was most likely the B-1A air battle droid, with far stronger armor plates, two wrist-mounted blasters, a jetpack, and two double-edged blades. These B-1s were actually a threat to most troopers, even as individuals. They also had a small shield that was capable of resisting direct lightsaber blows to a degree, which made them among the few Separatist battle droids that were specifically designed to deal with Jedi. Some Separatist designers had high hopes of mass-producing these droids and having them replace the standard B-1s, but these ambitions later disappeared once the droids were known to lose control if their jetpacks were shot down at specific weak points. Next, we have the B-3 Ultra Battle Droid. As the name suggests, this was the upgraded design of the widely produced B-2 Super Battle Droid, and was regarded as one of the most deadliest droids produced by the Trade Federation. The B-3 line only made it into the prototype phase, but nonetheless was extremely powerful and effective in the limited use it saw. At twice the height of its predecessor, the B-3 battle droid was a giant that towered over its enemies and had a deadly arsenal equipped across its large body. It included a small flamethrower, two rapid-fire blaster cannons, a rocket launcher, and a plasma cannon, which made it effective against light-armored vehicles. Its large size and weapons made it difficult for even Jedi to fight, but despite its success, it was never mass-produced, as there were far too many technical problems that were never fully fixed before the end of the war. However, just like with the Annihilator droids, the few remaining B-3 droids that survived the war were taken by the Empire and used for training exercises at some of the Imperial Academies. We then have the CB-3 Cortosis battle droid, this line of droids were coated with Cortosis armor, meaning they were completely resistant to lightsaber strikes. This made them effective at killing Jedi, so effective actually, that Palpatine was worried that their deployment could have given the Separatists a quick victory during the war, so he purposely had their development be put to an end. Not only did the droids Cortosis armor make them nearly unkillable against Jedi, but they were also outfitted with high-intensity laser cannons that were on special rotation wrists that made them highly effective in mowing down Jedi Knights as they could overpower their lightsaber defenses. When early reports of these droids' success came in, Palpatine, being the puppet master of both sides of the war, leaked the origin factory of these droids as well as a small opening in their armor, which allowed for the Republic to destroy these droids before they became too great of a threat. It was assumed that all of the Cortosis battle droids were destroyed following the elimination of their production factory, as none appeared afterwards. Next, we have the Advanced Dwarf Spider Droid. Built for use in nearly any terrain it was placed in, 
This advanced dwarf spider droid model was quite deadly in every engagement. With heavy armor plating, rocket launchers, and a heavy blaster cannon, this droid was a massive threat toward many Republic vehicles. It also was effective against infantry and was capable of fully operating in the dark. These droids were known to keep marching on toward their objective no matter what, and because of their extremely heavy armor plating, they were usually made a high priority to destroy during battle by Republic forces. Finally, for this video, we have the V2 series commando droids. While the standard commando droids themselves were already quite deadly against enemies they were put up against, the V2 series was just an upgraded version of them across the board. With heavier armor plating, the V2 droids were much harder to eliminate and were typically placed in specific strike zones during battles. Not much else is known about them, other than the few models that survived the war were used by mercenaries as advanced security droids. Thanks for watching this video. Help support the channel by becoming a member on our Patreon page, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.